I'm quite familiar with PETA, unfortunately. They've been in punchline on my channel a couple of times, actually. But this time I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna make PETA a punchline in this video. I'm gonna make them a punching bag. Welcome to the definitive guide on PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or as I like to call it, the Pathetic Evil Trash Association. See, PETA's mission statement is pretty straightforward. Animals are not ours to experiment on, eat, wear, use for entertainment, or abuse in any other way. And if that's all PETA was, I don't think people would despise them so much, but it's we do. But I figure we may as well start with the most disturbing, dark, ugliest place of the entire internet, which also happens to be my favorite, Twitter. This sweet pig was so dehydrated she drank for nearly two full minutes when offered water. Hashtag reasons to go vegan. Hashtag no it's not. Hashtag literally how. Like, okay, I'm in the target demographic, right? I'm not a vegan yet. So this post is supposed to make me question that. But the only thing this tweet really makes me question is why can't we delete other people's tweets? Now, I'm not stupid. Well, am I? That was that one time. Ooh. Yeah, I am. Now, I'm not so stupid that I don't understand the point of this. In fact, the GIF itself was taken from a video that actually does show a pretty disturbing pig farm. There's like maggots and roaches. It's in Indiana. It's just gross, okay? I mean, not because it's in Indiana, but you know, why say, hey, look at this one pig farm in this state and how poorly they treat their animals, to which people can respond, okay, but that's one farm. When you can just say, pigs thirsty, that's all you need to know. Now go vegan. Taking information out of context. Check. If you eat meat, then shut up about the world being on fire. You would almost think this is a joke, right? You would almost think this has to be ironic. But it's not a joke, it's just PETA. Actually, that's kind of contradictory, but you know what I mean. Hey, how do you think we can let people know that if they care about the climate crisis, then they might want to look into how their eating habits are also negatively affecting the environment? We... We could just tell them that but that's not gonna fit into a tweet um it definitely would fit it's like the exact thing you're right we should just tell them to shut up putting down other world issues check you know what's not a cute look speciesism if you cuddle with your cat after eating a turkey sub you're probably speciesist here's how you can do better wow so now it's an ism now it's twitter worthy PETA has just given you the ability to cancel me for thinking that my hypothetical cat is more important than the tuna I'm hypothetically feeding her. I'm speciesist. Specious? I'm cancelled, that's the point. Or so you think, but I stay one step ahead of the Twitter mob, so I'm gonna go ahead and release my apology video before I get cancelled. Hi all. I've had a continuous lapse in judgment, and this is so hard for me to make my tears look realistic. When it feels so good to be this young and have this fun and be successful. <laughs> I'm so successful. Species. I just... Here's how you can do... Let's find out how I can do better. We are all the same. In all the ways that matter. It doesn't matter what we look like. Okay, I actually completely agree with this so far. What language we speak. Or who we love. It doesn't matter if we have fur. I, no, no, this is too much. Dehumanization. It's the pedo way, because we are all the same. Oh, oh no, misleadingly attaching themselves to unrelated social issues. Check. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the PETA playbook. Spreading misinformation and taking information out of context, putting down other real world issues, and trying to fit in with social issues that have nothing to do with the topic. If you go to PETA's website or any of their social media platforms, just put on a hazmat suit because that's all you're going to see. Well, you'll see that as well as a very large donate button. But you know, now that we've looked at how PETA operates online, it's not really that bad. Let's take a look at how they operate in real life. PETA has euthanized thousands of animals. Look at this chart created by Dr. Stanley Corrin, which he compiled from information from the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Sciences. Over 10,000 animals between the years 2007 and 2011 were put down 
at PETA shelters. These people euthanized 95% of the animals that were in their care, and yet they still claim to care about vegan issues. But you know what? Any vegans out there, feel free to educate me on how uh, euthanizing 10,000 animals fits with vegan ideals, because I wouldn't know. Advocating against animal cruelty while doing that is just one of the many issues PETA has. And I feel like it's one of the more well-known ones. So instead, I would like to focus on PETA's lesser-known grievances. I've organized them all into a little something I'm calling the Plainly Explained Timeline of Atrocities, or uh, PETA for short. At least two PETA employees over the years were caught with other people's pets with the express intention of euthanizing them. The president of PETA, Ingrid Newkirk, believes that all pit bulls should be banned and euthanized, saying, quote, those who argue against the euthanasia policy for pit bulldogs are naive, as well as pits can go to the shelter and save one of the countless other br Okay, you know what? This just sounds like it was written by somebody who hates pit bulls because she was terrified of pit bulls as a child. What I'm trying to say here is it sounds like the perfect candidate to be the president of an animal rights association. PETA also donates their own money, giving $1,500 in 2001 to an organization called the North American Earth Liberation Front, or as the FBI like to call it, the largest and most active U.S. Oh, oh no. Some unlucky soul in 2001 thought he was donating $1,500 to save the turtles, but really, it went to the FBI's most wanted. They also donated $70,000 to some guy who burned down a Michigan University research lab, 27000 to a different guy who burned down a different Oregon University research lab, and $7,500 to some lady who tried to assassinate the director of a medical research lab. Are you seeing a pattern here? They also target children with disturbing advertisements with content like these horrifying comic covers of these demented video games. Wait, Pokemon Black and Blue? How is this even legal? Oh, it's a parody. So Nintendo couldn't sue them. Just like everything in this video is alleged, so PETA can't sue me. Got it. And those are just a few. Relatively speaking, this timeline barely scratches the surface. It makes things like spray painting people's fur coats or coining the phrase anti-animal speech or uh, doing this with your advertisements because I guess the old ones weren't working seem like child's play compared to the rest of the absolute garbage this organization loves to get themselves into. And yet, despite the fact that everything I just mentioned is public knowledge, and some of it is common knowledge, they still raised $50 million worth of donations in 2018 alone. PETA's supporters fall into two categories. There's the people who have no idea that PETA's doing any of this and would probably be horrified to see this video. And obviously we can't really blame those people. But then there are people who are well aware of PETA's activities and somehow come to the conclusion that it's still a good idea to support them. Never mind the fact that it takes, you know, a certain amount of economic privilege to make the decision to completely cut out animal products and animal farming from your life. Never mind the fact that there are many other cultures out there who have a completely different relationship with animals than our understanding. Never mind all of that. Everyone in the entire world is wrong, except people who specifically stick with PETA's worldview. So just follow them and give them money. Okay, am I talking about PETA or a cult because did I get my scripts mixed up? No, no, this is the right one. Some of these people really seem brainwashed. Thank you amazing PETA protesters for your bravery and commitment to the cause. Thank you for the support. Join PETA in making a Oh, it's a link to their website. Okay. This has the same energy as that one clip from Megamind. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You, and I love you, random citizen. And you can find interactions like this all over their social media. In conclusion, animals are not ours to experiment on, eat, wear, use for entertainment, or abuse in any other way. But euthanizing perfectly healthy animals for no reason is just fine. Distributing hundreds and hundreds of videos of suffering animals for the sole purpose of making millions in donation money is also fine. And giving that money to dangerous people and dehumanizing everyone who disagrees with us is perfectly fine because we respect all animals except human beings. And pit bulls, apparently. If you're thinking about canceling your donation to PETA, you can just send it to your local animal shelter instead, because with over 80% of PETA employees making between $35,000 and $50,000 a year, they're probably a lot more comfortable than the animals in their shelter. Anyway, looks like I've gotten 10 minutes of content out of this, so leave a like, tell me what you think, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to my 213,000 subscribers. Okay, bye.